Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 104 of the Talk is Cheap show. We've got another great show lined up for you today. But before we get started in earnest, first, let me do our now cursory introductions. Introducing my good friend, my co-host, resident expert analyst, former professional footballer, now social media influencer of some renown. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please give a big digital round of applause for Mr. Curtis Shaw from Curtis Shaw TV in the house. What are you saying, bro? Bo, 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 let's go. Yo, don't worry. The Christmas card's in the post, man. I sort of <laughs> that, that intro, man. But now I'm good, bro. Pleasure. Pleasure to be back and good times for Arsenal right now. You know, going Yeah, man, we're gonna we're sport. gonna explore that. We're gonna do a deep dive on that later, man. But yeah, it's good that you're well. Yeah, man. No uh, no COVID interruptions for you and your family, hopefully. No, no, at the moment, touch wood, man, you know. If you know I'm drinking that, you know, the ginger and lemon getting squeezed into the drink, you know, all them. You what know. about the Cersei tea? No, no Cersei tea, you know. No Cersei tea, though. When I was growing up. Uh, yeah. Everything that went wrong with you, from the headaches to injuries or whatever, my mum used to say, "Yeah, drink some Cersei." <laughs> you know, but you know, man, them old school our, Jamaican, our non-Jamaican school people might not know what that is, but Cersei tea is supposed to be one of those ail- one of those cures for every ailment. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, man, good to know that you're doing well, and I hope everybody yeah. out there watching is uh, also doing well. Is also COVID free. Uh, if unfortunately you have been affected by COVID, we wish you the best. Um, yeah. and get well soon, man. So I just want to put that out there. Right, okay, uh, moving on swiftly. Um, regular feature, which is um, games since the last show. Now, since our last show, Arsenal were featured in two games, um, the first of which was uh, an away trip to Leeds in the Premier League. Uh, a very impressive 4-1 win. Two mm. goals from the, what I call that, marvellous Martinelli. <laughs> <laughs> for 28th minute. Um, yeah. Bukayo Sacco adding a third just before half time. Leeds got a penalty in the 75th minute by Rafinha, but then um, no sooner had they thought that they were back in it, Emil Smith Rowe uh, wraps up the game uh, in what was a very comfortable and impressive 4 1 win, in my view. Curtis, what was your yeah. thoughts on that game, bro? I mean, there was a lot of talk about it. Obviously, Leeds were. You know, they had a lot of play. I think they had eight players missing. They had a 15-year-old on the bench. But listen, as I say, man, nobody cared about Arsenal when, you know, we played Brentford and we had all Epa players missing. Just beat what's in front of you and let them worry about it. So I thought it was a very professional and, and a good, solid performance. Um, I was a little bit disappointed we conceded because I didn't really feel like Leeds were going to score. Um, but if you go away from home anywhere in the Premier League and you score four, then, then I think that's a positive. And, and the same, you know, the young players again, Martinelli, fantastic. First goal was good. Second goal, even better. Saka, mm. another goal. Yeah, so I think that's what we said these guys need is to add goals to their games. I think they were all on course to, to hit double figures this season. So I thought it was a very, very good professional performance. Another one to, to tick off. Absolutely. And, and I would just add a win that put Arsenal um, in the Champions League places, which is much to be welcomed. Uh, I know we're going to oh, talk yeah. about that later, but yeah. <laughs> so I bet you was uh, very happy with that, weren't you? No, nah, it's funny, isn't it? Back in the day, man, top four, you know, we used to go mad at Wenger. Oh, he just wants top four. Now top four is, is dream world for Arsenal. So mm. feels good to be there, man. Let's enjoy it while we're there mm. and, and hope it lasts, you know. And I think, to be fair as well, a lot of people wasn't anticipating that. I mean, listen, I know we're yeah. only just about approaching halfway through the season, so we're not getting carried away. But, I mean, I think most Arsenal fans, if not all of them, would have said to you before the start of the season that if we could get a Champions League place, they would be happy with that. So, um, oh, yeah, fair sure. play to the boys for that. OK, um, so the second game uh, since our last show, uh, the second of those two games was a quarterfinal Carabao Cup game. Um, at home to Sunderland, who are League One side. So I think it's fair to say that most of the fans who rocked up there last night, most of the Arsenal fans who rocked up at the ground and, of course, watching around the world, would have been expecting a fairly rudimentary win. I hope I'm not being too disrespectful to Sunderland, but I think that was a general consensus of the fans. Uh, And, um, well, they got what they thought they were going to get because, in the end, Arsenal ran out 5-1 winners. Uh, An excellent... Patrick by Eddie and Ketia. Um, 
a goal for the almost forgotten Nicolas Pepe. I mean, I was asking you last week whether he was still in the playing staff. I think <laughs> so it's nice to see him get a game. Uh, he seemed to be enjoying himself, man. There's a few classic nutmegs going in there. Oh, Got himself yeah. a goal and three assists. Um, mm. It's probably rivaled Enketia for man of the match. Also yeah. a goal for Arsenal's teenage sensation, Dan Patino, um, scoring for Arsenal in his debut. So... It rounded off a pretty good week, in my opinion. What was your thoughts on the um, Sunderland game, bro? I mean, I expected us to win comfortably, to be fair. Like, you know, League One opposition, we should turn them over. But again, as I say in football, man, nobody nobody gives you anything in football. And i got to be honest, you know, after about 30, 35 minutes when they equalised or, or, sorry, got a goal back, I'm like, yo... You know, the game's looking a little bit... Um, Sunderland was starting to grow into it a little bit, so... You know, but I think once we got a couple of goals, you find with those sorts of teams, second half, they'll tend to tire a little bit. And, um, you know, I think the fitness of the of a Premier League club shone through, man. I, listen, I have to big up Eddie. I've been, um, I've slandered Eddie quite a lot in the past and said, you know, about whether he's good enough or not, but the hat-trick was quality. Um, it's about whether he can do that in the Premier League. And again, with Pepe, you know, you see him on the green screen behind me. And I'm a fan of Pepe. I think he's a very good player. But again, if he would have had a bad game yesterday, he would have got slaughtered. I know some people will say it's League One opposition, but if he didn't play well, he would have got hammered. He's turned up, scored, assists, two disgusting nutmegs. I mean, that guy Hume, he wouldn't have slept much, you know, after yeah, that because he got ruined. And yeah. But again, with Pepe, Put yourself back in the manager's thoughts, put him under pressure and see if you can produce that in the in the league. So, yeah, good night, semi-final. And listen, I'd love Arsenal to win this competition. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, listen, I, um, you know me. I mean, we've had this conversation before. <laughs> uh, I'm all yeah. about winning trophies. I'm more for that than Champions League football, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it was great. And uh, fair play to Arteta, man. I mean, you know, he's been in the news a lot recently um, for all sorts of reasons. Uh, both on and off the pitch uh, stuff. Um, this was his uh, second year in the job, the anniversary. And yeah. he's uh, he's had pr pretty good week, hasn't he? Oh, sure very good week. Very, very good week. I mean, listen, at the start of the season, if you just said to people, look, the week of Christmas will be in the Carabao Cup semi-final and fourth in the league, every Arsenal fan would have jumped at that chance, you know, mm. especially after we was bottom after the first three games. So... Listen, people think sometimes I'm too harsh on the manager. I always say I'm a reflection of, of what I'm seeing. And at the moment, I'm seeing positives. We're playing well. You know, the youngsters are thriving. Very few injuries at the moment. But, you know, it has to continue. We have to build on it. You know, we have to, we have to achieve something at the end of the season. So, at the moment, things are looking good. Yeah, absolutely. And we've spoken of, um, Ed, uh, we've spoken of uh, Pepe, sorry. Uh, good week for Eddie. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I mean, any striker you score a hat trick, and again, people will say League One opposition, but you know, the second goal for in particular was was really good. The little flick, and then the third goal, you know, old school Carnu little back flick. Man, I loved that um, finish. So, yeah. listen, I mean, Arteta was was waxing lyrical about him in the press conference. He loves him uh, by the sound of it, and I know he wants him to sign a new contract. I think we, we all know that Eddie's got talent. It's whether he can produce that in the Premier League. That's where I've still got, um, I'll be honest, I'm still not fully convinced about him in the Prem. But, you know, if he signs a new contract and stays, then he, then he needs to produce. Um, so we'll see what happens with him. Yeah, we'll see. And it's going to be, be very interesting moving forward, especially in light of the Aubameyang situation. Um, yeah. But would you keep him if it was down to you? Would you keep Eddie? I mean, you know, he has... There has been talk of him pursuing a move in January. Mm. Um, and it looked, I must admit, up to yesterday, it looked to all intents and purposes that he would be heading out. But the narrative, yeah. it's funny how narratives can change in the space of a, one game, you know? Like yeah. now, everyone's saying, no, we want him to stay. So are you one of those guys or are you still... Uh, do, you know what, do you know what, no, do you know what is, Laura, I think... I think to bring a guy through the youth system and to let him go for free is disappointing. He's a free agent in the summer, so for him to walk is disappointing. The flip side of it is what circumstances are you giving him that contract? You know, I, I'm still not convinced he should be a regular star. 
right. for Arsenal in the Premier League. I'm still not quite sure that he's good enough. Um, if he was willing to be a backup player, a squad player or something, then it's not the end of the world. But, you know, Arteta saying he wants guarantees of minutes. I don't think Arsenal can guarantee Eddie and Ketia minutes. I would say that Lacazette and Aubameyang are better than Eddie and Ketia. Mm. And we're probably looking for an upgrade on even those two players in the summer. So it's a tricky one. It is a tricky one. For me, you know, if he wants guaranteed football, I still think it'll be hard to keep him. If he's willing to play, you know, second or third choice or whatever, then possibly. But um, he's still got a lot more convincing to do for me. Yeah, Curtis, I mean, it's interesting that you uh, mention Aubameyang there because you've kind of segued nicely into uh, what's going to be our main item for discussion, or certainly one of them uh, today, and that is the whole situation regarding Aubameyang. Now, um, listen, since it's coming up to two weeks nearly, isn't it, since uh, yeah. we first got word that Aubameyang was being left out of the squad on disciplinary reasons, and previously to that he had been dropped for the Everton yeah. game, came on, missed a chance. And then in the days following, we started hearing about possible lateness and him being disciplined. Uh, well, it's moved on from that because we now know that um, he's been stripped of the captaincy um, and he's been ordered to train away from the first team squad on his yeah. own, away from the rest of the team, which I must admit, I'm slightly baffled by that. Mainly because we still fully don't know what's going on. I mean, um, the club have released what they want to release, as clubs tend to do. Aubameyang's not said anything. Um, so that's given rise to speculation. So we still don't really know what's going on. Um, but what we do know is that he's lost his place in the team. He's lost his um, role as captain. Um, and he's been ordered to train on his own. And uh, given that he's a member of the Gabon team, which is going to take part in the African Cup of Nations shortly, and we're yeah. also being told that it's very unlikely that he'll be involved at the weekend's game, you know, the Boxing Day game. Yeah. So it would appear that it's unlikely that we're going to see Aubameyang in an Arsenal shirt anytime soon. Certainly not for the rest of this year. Um, yeah. And when you consider as well that once you get into January, we are into like January transfer windows, there's heavy yeah. speculation that Aubameyang may even have played his last game for us, the way things are going to go. So... um I just wanted to get your thoughts on that um, and whether we're already witnessing life after Aubameyang. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, that sounds crazy to say that, even like a couple of weeks ago, isn't it? But yeah. it, you know I mean? it's funny how things go in football. We are, we are already sort of looking post Aubameyang, if you, if you, you know what I mean? Even if he does come back, he won't assume the role he was doing before. Mm. And he won't be, a, you know, what I would call a like, first team starter. Uh, and then you've got the likes of Eddie and that chipping in goals and that. So, you know, is this post the Bamiang era? What's your thoughts on it, bro? What's your initial thoughts on it? I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, Bamiang's being linked with moves in January. We're, we're being told that he's training away from the group. Um, I think he's trying to avoid a, an Ozil situation where he probably felt like he had a problem with Ozil, but when he's still in and amongst the group, he can sort of still influence people. And, and you know, I mean, I'm not saying Ozil did that, but a manager would probably want a player away from the group. It's strange because, you know, as I said, you know, the Aubameyang situation for me is a little bit sad. I think he's had some great times at Arsenal. He did carry us for two and a half years. Um, he, he had a bad season last year, started this season a bit up and down as well. Um but I would have always thought that when Aubameyang left the club, it would have been kind of with a, a round of applause and a clap on the back kind of thing that, you know, you did do well, you committed to the club, unlike your Van Persies, your Sanchez, all these guys who left. So it is disappointing the way it's, it's kind of going, but I think every time Arsenal win a game without him, that's going to kind of strengthen Arteta's argument that, you know mm. what? Actually, we don't really need him, possibly, which I'm not saying I agree with that because I, I still think there, there would be a role for Aubameyang to play. But, you know, I think it will depend on what's on the table in January. I think if you start seeing, you know, he's being linked with Juventus and Barcelona, which equally tells you that he's still highly rated around football if clubs like that are interested. Um, I think if if there's a decent offer, someone's willing to pay a lot of that wage, 
And if Aubameyang and Arteta haven't haven't settled their differences, which Arteta still not given us clarity, then mm. I'm not sure you'll see Aubameyang in an Arsenal shirt again, which is a little bit sad. But it's football, isn't it? We move on. But um, it, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. But at the moment, if I was betting on it, I would say I'm not sure you're going to see Aubameyang too often for Arsenal. Yeah, I would have thought. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, um, yeah, you're right. And in terms of the way foot club, football clubs tend to work, the only real constant are the fans, really, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Because players will come and go. So will managers, so will technical staff, coaching staff. But the one constant is the fans and, of course, the club. Um, yeah. And without the fans, there is no club and vice versa. So, yeah. But, I mean, I just noted, actually, that since uh, Aubameyang's absence, the start of his absence, we've had three games. Um and in those three games, we played West Ham, we beat them 2-0. We played Leeds, we beat them 4-1. And then, of course, we thrashed Sunderland. So you're right in what you say. In those three games, we've hardly missed him. Have we? But, of course, that's yeah. only three games. And, um, you know, there's a lot more, what I would call, more challenging games to come. Yeah, but um, yeah. it is starting to begin. It is beginning to look. I mean, you speak to other fans, as I did yesterday. You sort of see the comments that are going around on social media. And I'm I'm picking up that vibe, man, that a lot of people have sort of shrugged their shoulders and said, well, you know, it could be the end. And if it is yeah. the end, well, that, that might be it. And a bit like you, yeah, I was a bit saddened, man, because if you look at Aubameyang's, I've done a bit of research here. Um, if you look at his goal-scoring career at Arsenal, it is quite impressive. Pretty impressive, man. You know what I mean? It's got to yeah. be sick. 163 games in all competitions, 92 goals and 21 assists. Fastest Correct. ever. Uh, as an Arsenal striker for 50 league goals. Um, and yeah, he's still only 32, really. I mean, you know, it's not like, you know, he's 35 or 36, completely washed up. Although some people... See to <laughs> but I don't believe that. I just think that he's uh, going through a poor run of form. I mean, listen, he's only got four goals this season. But then there's a certain striker down the road um, who's still playing for Spurs and he's only got two goals this season. So, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Form is temporary, class is permanent, as I like to say. Mm. But yeah, um, it's not looking good for him, is it? Because the noises that are coming out of the club are such that you think, well, once we get into January and in the transfer window, it looks like a couple of clubs there are sniffing around already. I mean, I've heard Juve, yeah. I've heard the two Milan teams, uh, and I've heard Barcelona. Have you heard anything on that front? I mean, the thing is, you could see Aubameyang go into, like, Syria a bit slower. A lot of players go there as they're getting older. And I still think he's got goals in him. Um, you put him in the right team and create chances. So, And look, he goes to AFCON in two weeks. So it could be one of them, like, out of sight, out of mind. You know, yeah. he's away for a month. And I, I just think behind the scenes, Arsenal will be saying to his agent now, you know... See what you can find. See see what you can do. See what offers you can put on the table. I think if someone comes up with a decent offer for him, I think they'll I think they'll move him on because I just think the big wage, the fact he's clashing with the manager. I mean, I don't know if you saw there was a story today saying that um he's been late on several occasions and Arteta feels it undermines him. Obviously, he's very strict. You know, you saw Pep Guardiola on that documentary how how he was. So I just think I think it's a clash of personalities. Like I said, if Obama had 15 goals this season, mm -hmm. that story might have never come out. But when you got four goals and you're a problem to the manager, yeah. those stories get leaked out real quick. So it, mm -hmm. it's one of them. It's one of them. It's unfortunate, but it's the way football goes. And and mm -hmm. listen, like I said, it's sad because I think six, seven weeks ago, Aubameyang was doing the Henri celebration against Tottenham and he was yeah. the hero. But, you know, mm. I think this has probably been bubbling under the surface for a long time and we've just kind of found out about it more now. So, Yeah. Like yeah. you, I did hear that story about the lateness. So are we saying then, or not you or me, but uh, is it being said then that it is a number of times? Yeah, well, the story I read, it said... Um, you know he's been he's been late multiple times. It said so that's all. I, that's all I've read. And it said, you know, Arteta feels very undermined by it. And listen, you won't, you can't do that at top level sport. And and listen, whether that warrants being sold or punished is a different question. That's where my kind of argument came from. Uh, could you have punished him 
and then kind of re into you know brought him back into the group but he obviously mm -hmm. just feels like maybe it's time to move him on and and yeah, because yeah. he's on such a big wage that brings a lot of pressure if you're on 300 grand you should be the top boy really and he yeah. hasn't been that this season so far so yeah i just i think it it's it's not looking good for anyone that wants to see Aubameyang in an arsenal shirt i'm not sure if you're going to yeah. see it but you know he didn't completely squash it in the press conference he kind of said well you know we're going game to game whether he's involved so we'll have yeah, to see I, I must admit i wasn't wholly convinced by the way he was saying that he no, said no. it but it was one of them whereby he looked like he was saying it to just tick that box to say well you know i mean there is a way back however yeah, yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> um, i would just say as well that um what do you make i mean this is an interesting one I, i'm sort of chewing it around in my mind and um and i'm asking the question but what do you think of the way it's been handled? Like, there's a school of thought that says that, you know, by being public, they're being transparent, and that's what the fans want. Yeah. And I get that. But then also, I look at it and I think, well, they've been public, very public with this, up until a certain point. Like, they haven't said how many times he's transgressed or, you know what I mean? But they've kind of hung him out to dry a little bit. So what's your thoughts on that? Um, do you think he's been hung out to dry or... Do you believe that um, there is no issue with that? The club have a duty of transparency to the fans and, you know, so they're kind of letting us know what's gone on without revealing the absolute full details, but they're giving us enough to know to make an informed decision. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Because I've heard what different. Is, though, different. I, th I think once, I think not only did they decide to punish him, I think they've decided to move him on. That's where I think it goes deeper. Right, so right. So when you're deciding to move him on, I think they need the transparency because if they just sold Aubameyang in January, people would be like, hang on, like we know he's been a bit out of form, but selling him. So I think what they've done is kind of said, look, this is what's happened. This is why we're moving him on. And, and then they don't look like the full guy in the argument. You know, I think if they were punishing him, but going to bring him back into the group, I'm not sure they would have done it like that. But I think because they've probably decided, you know what, we're going to try and move him on. He's on 300k. He's not been in great form. He's turning up late. Got a lot of young, you know, impressionable players in the group. That might not be good for them. Then I mm -hmm. think that's why they've been transparent. And I think when Wenger was manager, a lot of us didn't like the fact that he was so, you know, covered up and he, he, he protected the players a lot. Didn't tell us too much. So... Look, I never like to see a player, you know, singled out and sort of punished, like here in his training by himself and, and things like that. I think that is a bit harsh, but mm. I think when they reach that point where they've had enough and they're going to move you on, that's kind of what they're going to do. I've seen it happen before, and um, mm. I think that's the easiest way they probably think to to move him on is to make him quite uncomfortable at the club. So yeah. I'm not surprised by it, really. No, no, I would agree. I mean, I think the use of the term multiple um, is in, is intuitive, to be honest, because once a club start using terms like that, it's a very yeah. clever term to use as well. Of course but it is. It could be two, it could be ten, isn't it? Two, three, ten, yeah. fifteen, twenty, always yeah. late. Um, so, you know what I mean? Within that, people are going to have license to, you know. You know yeah, I mean? that's to, it, yeah. To have their opinion yeah, right. and, and to go whichever way they want to on it. I mean, when you use yeah. a term like multiple, it's deliberately ambiguous, really, isn't it? Yeah, um, of course. But what was interesting, we had a discussion similar to this last week, and um, we received uh, a number of comments. We got a lot of views from the programme, so thanks, everybody, for watching the show, and thanks also to those who commented. Uh, it was quite mixed, the, the comments, although I would, say, I would be fair and say that the majority of the fans seem to be taking the stance of the club or agreeing with the, the stance that the club is taken. But there were some very notable uh, exceptions. And uh, people said that, you know, he's been treated harshly. It was a kind of sledgehammer to crack a nut syndrome. So what do you make of that? Do you think it's been a bit too harsh or what? I mean, yeah, you, I mean... you played at the top level. Uh, tell us a little bit about what it's like when players are late, what the mood is in the dressing room, how managers take it and stuff like that. What's your... Uh, yeah. Enlighten, the, enlighten our crowd. What, what you got to tell them about that? I mean, do you know what? I got to be honest. I turned up one. I turned up 
late for a game once. Was it Only multiple once. times or was it just no, one? No, no, not, not multiple, not multiple. And I definitely wasn't on 300 grand, I tell you that. But um, no, nah, man, it's, do you know what? They don't defend you. They they won't defend you. The players won't defend you for turning up late mm. because it's one of them. If it takes you half an hour to get to the ground, don't give yourself half an hour. Yeah. You know, they, these men have got big, they're millionaires with great cars. You know, I'm sure they've got yeah. more than enough time to get there. So I've got to be honest, being Is late, there any mitigation though? Is there like, I mean, you know, let's be honest, man. We, none of us really want to be late, do we? But at no. times we are late because of things that may happen on the way. Mm. Um, I can remember once I missed a flight. Only time I've ever done that in my life. But the problem with that is I set out very early but it wasn't my fault that there was a pilot on the M1 mm. uh, and the road got shut down. Um, by the time I got to the airport, and even allowing for that, I only got there, I think they shut the gate about a minute or two before we arrived. Mm. But unfortunately, man, you know what I mean? Uh, you can argue with them as much as you want. Once that gate is shut, they're not going to open it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I can honestly say that not only did I leave early, I left mm. very early. It was just, I was just a victim of circumstance. So do clubs take that into consideration? Is there any mitigation if you? I think there is, but like you said, you miss one flight. You haven't missed multiple flights. <laughs> no, I mean... Yeah, good point. Good and the point. thing we have to say, look, he turned up late for the North London derby, one of the biggest games of the season for Arsenal. And they didn't strip him. He was still captain. I know he got benched that day, but it's not like they said, right, you've been late, that's it, you're done. Mm. So in the defence of the club, they have given him opportunities. Now, this one, obviously, with his mum, we still don't know the full circumstances, but clearly the club have given him some sort of leeway to say, well, you know, come on, Abba, you need to sort that out. You know, you're all over social media with these flash cars, you know, get in one and get here on time. So, yeah. listen, if the, if the circumstances are exceptional, the club will take it into yeah, account. We'll if it's simple things like traffic and I, uh, you know, I only gave myself 20 minutes for a 30 minute journey. They're yeah. not having it. I could tell you now, I turned up late for a game. I think I was five, 10 minutes late. Walked in the dressing room. Manager said, get out. Get really? out. You're not really? in the squad. Yeah. And I was fined as well. Right. Didn't want to hear nothing about, no, there weren't no excuse. It was match day. You've had all day. No, I'm not hearing it. So, so, uh, you know, so uh, by that logical extension, I took it you never did that again. No, I did do it again. But you know what? I didn't have a gold Lamborghini outside, you know. <laughs> <laughs> My car was chugging up and down the road, mate, like the Flintstones. Yeah, so, yeah. But... But it's another two hours before time, you know. Yeah, I mean? exactly. But um, you have to learn quick. I'll tell you something else that kind of interested me uh, this week. And I did talk to you about it off camera. We had a little conversation. Um, but I'd like the people to have the benefit of your knowledge on this. So we, a couple of times this week, we heard Arteta talking about cultural differences. And mm. I must admit, when he used that term, and he used it on more than one occasion, I did sort of think, hmm, what's he hinting at here? You know what I mean? Um, you know, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but I was curious as to what he meant. What was your thoughts on that? He, he, made, he made a couple of references to cult, cultural differences and how Arsenal tried to accommodate cultural differences but at the end of the day you know there's non-negotiables and stuff like that so what, what was your impression of that statement I thought that was quite the uh, that was quite strange that one I mean I suppose there are aren't there there are a lot of um, is he of suggesting people... that Aubameyang and being of uh, African descent <laughs> <laughs> somewhat have a different attitude towards being late because that's what I, I thought I mean maybe I'm jumping the gun is that what you thought I mean, look, I, it's hard to say in it, on something like that, you know, but listen, people, stereotypically people sometimes say things like, even me on my channel, sometimes I'm late, they're like, oh, look, he's on Jamaican time. You know what I mean? Come strolling into the stream 10 minutes <laughs> later. You know what I mean? I've done it enough times, man, ring me. Yeah, I'll be there in 20 minutes. You know, I'm 45 minutes away, but you just got to... So sometimes, you know, people are too laid back for time and turn up late and, you know, I, I don't know. Is it's it a different. black thing? Sometimes, not always, but, you know, sometimes that Caribbean, no, on, let's, let's have it. African let's nature, straight. man. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, what? I've been talking to some friends and family about it. And I think, you know what, I'm going to throw my cards on the table. I think if I'm being honest, right, 
We like to keep it 100 on this show. Yeah, yeah. I do think there is something in that, as much as I hate to admit it, because it does, doesn't make the culture look good, but no. I think there are some people, not all, in yeah, the black all. community that don't see lateness as being the crime no. or the big problem that some other cultures may do. Uh, That's yeah. just the way we are in the black community. And I think that goes for the Caribbean community, the African community, and you know what I mean? Certainly those two sets of community. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, listen, I mean, like you said, not all, but a lot of my... that? Possibly, possibly, because, you know, we are, it's man. We're in back. the room, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it could it could be it could be but you know what you what you hope is that with age and maturity and understanding of your profession that you grow out of that you know as i've got older i'm like listen man this time thing you're not going to achieve anything by turning up late because yeah, yeah. people just say he's unreliable you know what i mean if you're on time and you're prepared it's it's much better so i think that's the problem with a bamming you're not a 19 year old who's gassed because you got your first Lamborghini. You're 32 years of age now. You're the leader, you're the captain. And I think that's where there's so much of an issue with it that Arteta's got this young squad. You're you're the big dog at the top and you're leading these, these players astray, turning up late. It's not a good example. So mm. I think because he's the captain, that's why they've, they've been even more harsh with him. But yeah, man. Yeah. So yeah, he needs to turn up on time. And I would like to say on that for the benefit of our white or non-black people, or non-Caribbean, non-African people, that although we laugh and joke about this, and there is an issue, I'm not going to depend, I'm not going to pretend that there isn't an issue. A lot of people in the community, in the culture, hate that. They absolutely mm. do hate that, which is why when I've spoken to some people about the Obama thing, they've been saying, yeah, that's right, man, if he's not going to be on time, get him out. Because I think a lot of people in the black community are trying to get away from that kind of yeah. impression that we treat um, being late less, more strict than other cultures. So, and me personally, I, I don't like the idea of people being late either. And I'm sure you no. don't. You've already hinted at that and what happened in your career when you were late once. So, yeah, I, but I just wanted to uh, discuss that because when I heard him make reference to that a couple of times, I, I did kind of wonder to myself, is he going down that road? You know what I mean? Um, mm. So I was interested. But so... He, <sighs> Judging by what you're saying, bro, you, you're kind of definitely thinking that, you know what I mean, it could be it for a Bamiang. And I mean, if that is yeah. to be it for him, what a sad way to bow out. I mean, look, it's, it's happened. A lot of players, you know, Ozil, you know, look at look when he signed, how the reaction, people were in, you know, it was mayhem outside the Emirates. When he left, I, I don't think he even really said goodbye, did he? He left during, yeah, he during the pandemic. Floor, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was gone, mate. They had him at the airport out of there. Yeah. And a Batman could be the same thing. He could go to AFCON, you know, doesn't see any of the Arsenal fans uh, at the stadium. They'll probably try and get rid of him while he's over there. And he yeah. could just go straight to Juventus or Barcelona or, you know, Juventus. Um, sorry, Barcelona have just signed Ferran Torres from Man City for 50 million. So, they found some money from somewhere. Apparently, they took a 500 million euro loan. So, mm, they might have a little bit of money knocking around mm. for a Bamiyang there, a few euros. So, yeah, it is sad. It's sad. But, you know, as much as I love a Bamiyang as a player, hasn't helped himself. But has he been hard done by? I'm sure we'll hear the full story once he leaves. You know what I mean? Because we haven't heard nothing from his side yeah, of it, yeah. which is we haven't, um, we shame. Haven't, um, I mean, I, I guess he is bound by certain stipulations in his contract yeah. about speaking out. Uh, and I guess as well, if you're a Bamiyang, you do want to play it, you know, the right way. You don't want to be yeah. out there making statements and stuff or saying things that you might later regret. So yeah. he's got to be professional. I mean, we really know he's not always been wholly professional. Mm. So I think it's important that this time that he keeps his counsel I mean, personally speaking, man, I mean, I know I'm going to sound like I'm capping a bit for a Bamiyan because I do I do rate the guy and I'm hoping that there is a way back. But the more I look at it and the more I speak to people like yourself, the more I'm coming to the conclusion that it may be the end. And, I, and, and like I said, even if he does come back, I think that the writing's on the wall, really, isn't it? I think we are mm -hmm. now in the post of Bamiyan era. It's obviously come a lot sooner than I would have liked to have seen. Yeah. I'm, and I'm... Possibly I'm speaking for yourself as well. And like you said, it is kind of sad, but it is kind of looking that way. Yeah. And, um, if the other guys can chip in with the goals, I mean, it was it's interesting that previously, myself and you had always spoken about 
Arsenal's lack of goals from midfield. Now, yeah. all of a sudden this season, we are getting those goals from midfield, from the likes of Saka, from the likes of Odegaard and Smith Rowe. Um, yeah. So maybe, you know, not being funny, but maybe the manager's looking at it and said, well, listen, we're not wholly reliant on this guy for goals anymore. You know what mm. I mean? He's not the only one in the team that can score. Yeah. Suddenly that FA Cup when Aubameyang won <laughs> off the back of his goals and he's looking like a real forlorn memory. Memory, I mean? yeah, yeah. That's and that's it. like ghosting sports sometimes, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, listen, managers don't care what you did yesterday, man. I tell you that for sure, mate. What are you doing today? That's all they're bothered about. What you are know? you doing for me lately, mate? What have you done for me lately, man? You can't tell your missus, well, I took you to the shard last year. She'll go, well, what about this year? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, two years yeah. ago, I gave you the greatest night of your life. Yeah, but that was two <laughs> years ago. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. That's, I guess that's how it translates. Yeah, that's how it goes. Mate. Yeah, man, I mean, listen, uh, if he does go, he's going to go with my blessings. Because, uh, listen, I'm still not giving up on Aubameyang. Uh, and I still, for, regardless of what happens, even if he was to go tomorrow, in my view, he's still been one of our best players in recent years. I'm not going to yeah. um, allow that, what happened over the last couple of weeks, to tarnish that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, it's very yeah. interesting getting your thoughts on that. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, so the post Aubameyang era. Looks like we might have entered it. Um, right then, moving on now to our Ops of the Week. Uh, another game without a Bamiang, it would appear. Um, mm. Day. Um, the mighty Norwich. <laughs> Let's be having you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, listen, I don't want to appear frivolous and laugh and joke. I mean, we do need to win this game. We're going to stay in the top four at the end yeah. of the season. Uh, games like this would have proved to be very important and we can't afford to go yeah. there complacent and be overconfident and then uh, run into problems. Got to keep it professional, as we've just been yeah. talking about, the need to be professional. Um, so, yeah, but I would have thought that... <laughs> I, I need to be careful how I, I Yeah, I know, they'll clip you, you know. <laughs> exactly. I can see the confidence in your face already. Yeah. Well, I'm confident. <laughs> But I'm yeah. trying not to be overconfident. But let's mm. be honest, we go there in very good state of mind, despite what's yeah. happened with the captain or the ex-captain. Um, mm. And we are playing well and we are scoring goals. The confidence is high. Um, and let's also be honest, man, we're playing Norwich, who are bottom of the Premier League. Yeah. Um, what they got? 10 points. Played 17 games this season. They've only won two, drawn four and lost 11. Um, we have actually played them already. Uh, we only beat him 1-0, didn't we? Yeah, and do you know who scored that goal? I know, Aubameyang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It was, it was uh, uh, but yeah, so we played them already. We beat them. Um, mm. Albeit we are going to their place this time. Uh, yeah. It was interesting that when we played them previously, we were coming off the back of three defeats. Yeah, yeah. And um, I we beat them and then we turned it around and got a win there. And that kind of kick-started a little surge in form. Yeah. We're playing them this time under much more different circumstances. We are actually in a pretty good vein of form yeah. and scoring freely. Um, so, Curtis, man, what are you saying about this game? You I mean, do you know what? What, what? what I'm thinking and what I'm going to say, I'm trying to adjust it slightly because <laughs> <laughs> in my head, like I'm like, you know, we should be, these should be getting rolled over. I mean... They've scored eight goals this season. Eight goals in 17 games. They're bottom of the league. They have brought in Dean Smith. They've looked a little bit more resilient under him, even though they haven't really picked up too many results. But, yeah. you know, I'm, do you know what? They're, this this is the biggest credit what I could give to Arteta in the team is we're going into games now and I'm believing in the team. I'm looking at Norwich. I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah. they should be getting dealt with. In my um, head, I can see Martinelli, Saka, all their man running and, and causing, you know, all kinds of problems. So you can never underestimate any team, especially away from home. You know what it's going to be like. Carrow Road, close to the pitch. They'll be fired up the day after Boxing Day, but or, or on Boxing Day, sorry, the day after Christmas. But I think we're going to beat them. I think we'll beat them. I think we'll score goals. Um and I'm confident that we'll win, man. We, you know, I want Arsenal to start looking at the teams in front of us. You know, let's be a bit, let's be a bit cheeky now. We're here. You know, I'm looking at Chelsea going, still. yeah. You know, Chelsea, you lot drop a few more points. We're coming for you. I'm not really worrying about mm. what's behind us at the moment. You know, I think 
while we're there, let's enjoy it and let's hope it lasts. So I think we're going to beat Norwich comfortably. I can't lie. I hope they don't clip me and mess up, but I think we're going to beat them. Well, you know what? The Premier League being the Premier League, <clears throat> there's always uh, upsets and results that you look at it and you think, wow, how did that happen? But um, yeah. I also have to balance that by saying, at the moment, I'm not sure if you would agree with me. I'm sure you let me know in a second or so. But I would say going into this game, the confidence at Arsenal is as high as it's ever been in the season. Yeah. Um, you know, off the back of beating West Ham and, you know, that, that 5-1 win against Sunderland. Even with the Abamyang stuff that's going on in the background there, it doesn't seem to have affected the players. And the mood seems high. I'm looking at sort of body language on... On the bench with the players this day, everyone seems motivated. Even last night, everybody that came in seemed to have a very good game. I know Balogun didn't have his best game, but you know what I mean? Apart from that, pretty much yeah. everybody played really well. Um, it was nice to see the smile back on Pepe's face. I haven't seen that in weeks and weeks. <laughs> and uh, the mood seems good, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, I would say that the vibes and the confidence going into this game is as high as I've seen it all season. And that could spell bad news for Norwich. Um, because yeah. I think if we get, if we make a decent start and things start to click and guys like, you know, Martinelli start to make an impression on the game early, I think we could run out winners by a couple of goals, man. Do you know the thing, do you know the thing, Laurie? Do you, do you yeah. know where, the, just to quickly go back, do you know the point when the Aubameyang thing might become more um, talked about is, let's face it, well, West Ham was a tricky game, but the others we've, We've been favourites in all those games. Leeds, you know, they had players missing. Sunderland, League One. Southampton had players missing. Norwich, bottom of the league. It's when a result goes against us or strikers miss chances and all of a sudden the first question in the press conference will be, you know, you missed that chance today. Would a Bamiang have scored that? Could you have won if he'd have been playing? At the moment, it's nice because we're beating these teams. We're scoring goals. We're looking confident. But we also have to balance that by saying City beat us five, Liverpool beat us four, Chelsea beat us two nil, we lost to Brentford, we drew with Brighton, you know. There are games where we have come unstuck, so I think that's where it will kind of unravel yeah. itself a little bit more. I mean, I think we play Man City on New Year's Day, you know, yeah. so I still think, oh, you know... Think you're coming up against Wolves as well. Wolves have, um, Wolves, yeah. their form has picked up a bit recently, so I'm expecting that will be a difficult game. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think there's a, I think there'll be a lot more twists and turns in this story. You know, it's all right at the moment because we're on a good run, but you know, when things get a bit tricky, that's when the questions are a bit more difficult. So yeah. you're absolutely right because I can remember um, a couple of years ago when Ozil was left out. Yeah. And every time we had an indifferent performance, especially if we weren't creating much, the first question that would be put to the manager is, "Did we miss Ozil's creativity in midfield?" Yeah. Yeah. So, by logical extension, you're you're absolutely right in bringing that up. Um, if we go a couple of games and we're not scoring freely, or we've lost a game or drawn games that we should have won, and we've missed chances, the first question is going to be, you know, oh, but... are you missing the Abamyang? Would he have, would he have done better in that position? So that's inevitable. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's something where all we can do with that one really is wait and see, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what, what kind of team would you like to see against Norwich this weekend then, bro? For, for me, same again. I pick, team, the, yeah? I pick the same team. Yeah, because um, they're performing and it's crazy. And this is what I'm saying about football. Things can change quickly because three or four weeks ago, you would have never picked an Arsenal team and left Smith Rowe out of it. Yeah. But a few weeks later, all of a sudden he can't get in the team and he's coming off the bench, banging goals in. But at the moment, Martinelli is, you know, flavour of the month right now. Everyone's loving him. Saka on the other side starting to score. And Odegaard's probably having his best run in a team, uh, in an Arsenal team. And obviously Lacquer's up front. So I think that's a positive that these players are pushing each other. Smith Rowe's coming in, scoring, but still not quite getting in the team. Um, yeah, I mean, look, you know my thoughts on the midfield, Jacka and Partey. You know, I want the upgrade. But at the moment, that's our best partnership. So until anything changes, and obviously AFCON starts in a couple of weeks, so we're going to lose him for a number of weeks. Yeah, we're going to well. lose him. We're also going to lose Pepe. 
Yeah. Uh, he's yeah. Ivorian, so he'll be playing for Ivory Coast. He'll be going El Nani and obviously yeah. Aubameyang. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got to we got to definitely win these games while we've got them. I think with Pepe, I don't expect Pepe to start. But I think now with that performance, I hope he's at the front of the manager's mind that, look, you know, if we need to make a change, I'm bringing him on. Because over the past like few weeks, He's hardly even coming off the bench, so <laughs> I hope he's, he's not even in the tracksuit. Off, is yeah, it? he's not even in the kit. You know what I mean? I'm just yeah. sitting there, but sitting yeah, hopefully he's head over his head, looking like he'd rather be anywhere else. I'm telling you, know you. I, mean? I don't know if you saw the awkward, um, like embrace between Pepe and Arteta after the game yesterday. Oh, I didn't see that. It was almost was. like you know, I'm I'm hugging you, but I don't really want to <laughs> hug you. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, Penny yeah. for Pepe's thoughts. Yeah. But... I do agree with you, though. He sat on that touchline at games and he sort of gave me that impression that he'd rather be anywhere else in the world than he was. There. I have felt a bit sorry for him, to be honest, because I've said all along, and you, and to be fair to you, you've agreed with me, that um, he's a mercurial talent, man. I mean, you saw yesterday with those nut my, nutmegs and the way he went past players effortlessly, um, that there is a real talent there. It's just that does the manager trust him? I think there's definitely an issue with consistency and definitely an issue with trust as far mm. as the manager's concerned. Um, and he's another one that could go in January, do you think? Um, listen, maybe they would accept a good offer for him. I, th I think it's down to Pepe. Sometimes as a, as a player, you're in a position where the manager's not really having you and you've got to make it almost impossible for him to leave you out. You know, I always said this, you know, you don't have to like your manager. Your manager doesn't have to like you. It's about working within that environment. You know, a few weeks ago, everyone's saying, Martinelli, man, this guy, he ain't coming off the bench. He can't get a kick. Arteta don't like him. Now we're all celebrating him. He's scoring goals because he's come on and he's proved himself. So Pepe has to show that same aggression. Listen, if I come on for 20 against Norwich, I'm ripping up that Norwich fullback. I'm going to get a goal, get an assist, yeah. nutmeg someone. You know, that's what he's got to do. So he's got to, he's got to prove himself. The talent's there. It's whether he's got that aggression and that belief um, to do it. And I hope he does. Me too, bro. Me too. Uh, you summed it up very nicely. And we're, we're kind of coming to the final throws of this show. Um, but before we do that, I just want to put you on the spot. Not that it's really putting you on the spot. You kind yeah. of hinted to what you're going to say. The Norwich game. Yeah. Are we going to win and why? Uh, yeah, I think we are going to win. Um, I think we're we're confident. We're scoring goals. We're, we're a lot quicker. We're moving the ball a lot quicker. I think with Martinelli and Saka, we're a bit more pacey and direct down the wings. Uh, most of our squad pretty much is, is available or, or not injured at the moment. So I think we're rolling into town, man. Norwich, bottom <laughs> of the league, you know, and I, I'm expecting... You're, you're rolling into town with a swagger. Yeah, yeah, man. They, they, I'm, Norwich, to me, look like that turkey on Christmas Day right now, mate. You know, they're, they're getting cooked. Waiting to be devoured. <laughs> yeah, they're waiting to be cooked, man. So I'm, go, I'm going for 3-0 to Arsenal, man. Merry well, Christmas. Well, well, if they get 3-0, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be a great Christmas. Um, yeah, man. But yeah, man, thanks. Any uh, Norwich players to look out for? Danger, man? Uh, no, 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 no. None? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, no, I mean, I mean, look, they got Gilmore's quite good. I think Gilmore, centre midfielder. I think he's on loan from Chelsea. He's decent. Um, you know, Pookie's one of them players, isn't he? That you know, he, he'll go three months without scoring, and then Arsenal turn up and he'll nick yeah. a goal or something. So, well, he's been um, puking up recently. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, they got eight goals this season, man. Come on, we need we need to roll into town and. and I did and like the look of the guy. Is it Todd Cantwell before? He, oh, Cantwell's not bad, but he's yeah, not really yeah. featured much this season, has he? No, no, no. He hasn't. He's kind he of lost his way well. a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe he was, it's the wrong he was, kind of player awesome for a struggling team. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, but no, listen, we we're still gonna have to do the job, like you said. Yeah. We only beat them one nil at home. They're not just gonna roll over. So, but I'm going three nil, man. Yeah, no yeah, I think the difference with that game, as I hinted at earlier, is that when we played them, it was the, the back of three straight defeats. Yeah. Um, so the confidence wasn't really there. Whereas this time, uh, we're going yeah, off the back of three or four, not just wins, but convincing wins. So I think yeah. the confidence levels are completely different. Um, yeah. And so for that reason, I'm agreeing with you. Uh, I'm going to give it at least two clear goals. 
Um, yeah, but man. I am expecting Arsenal to win and win well and to maintain that fourth place spot. OK, yeah, thank you very much, bro. Appreciate that. We're now coming to the end of the show. Thank you very much for coming on the show and, as usual, providing with your honest and forthright and intuitive um, viewpoints there, which we very much appreciate. Uh, tell the people where they can find you on social media, bro. Yeah, check out the channel, Curtis Shaw TV, you know, and uh, just want to say, obviously, because this will probably be the last show we do before Christmas, you know, big up everyone, big up yourself, Robbie, all the team um, for all the great work, big up to everyone who's been supporting this show, supporting my channel and all that. So I hope everyone has a great Christmas and you know, onwards and upwards for 2022 Champions League settings, people. Beautifully said, beautifully said, as always. And I want to endorse that. And um, yep. Yeah. Same same types of uh, thing, man. To everybody watching, truly appreciate your support. Let's keep the show interactive, man. Send us your comments. Are we in the post Abamyang era? Is that the end for the big man? Is he gone? And um, now that he has gone, what's your thoughts? Do we thank him and move on and say, look, we're moving into a new era and we're going to be fine? What's your thoughts on that? Um, but yeah, man, thanks everybody for watching, not just this week, but throughout the year and even the years before. Um, we had a hundredth show a few weeks back. We really, truly appreciate your support. Keep watching, keep supporting and um, have a great Christmas. Stay well, stay healthy, stay COVID free. And uh, we look forward to seeing you after Christmas. But yeah, have a great time and uh, see you again soon. We're out.